Welcome to Minnes Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Over the last few weeks, we have been bringing you candidate interviews for the Rural Municipalities of Alberta president. And this past weekend, over a thousand delegates from across rural municipalities in Alberta came together in Edmonton to elect a new president, which led to the election of a new vice president as well. On the fifth and final ballot, a new president was selected. As the five candidates was whittled down to Jason Snyder, the Reeve of Vulcan County, and Cara Westerland, councillor for Brazo County. All right, members, we do have a winning candidate. And I would like you to declare that Cara Westerland has been elected. Westerlin, a three-term councillor for Brazo County and vice president of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta, became the 26th president of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta, replacing Panoka County Reeve, Paul McLaughlin. After her win, Westerlin spoke to delegates, thanking them for their support. I have to first start off by thanking my council and my administration at Brazo County, Bart, Donna, Glenn, Cody, Dallas, Anthony, who's not here today, Rudy, I'd like you to stand and give a wave. I want to thank you all for your patience and for allowing me to step up and take on this role. It wouldn't be possible without your support. I'd be amiss if I didn't thank my babies at home for allowing their mom to follow her passion and for allowing them to share me with all of you and with rural Alberta. Trevor, Ashley, Tina and Donna for their hours of work and support of building the water bottles. Those were all done by hand, as well as the candy bags and folding those brochures. To all of those who helped me over the last few days, I can't thank you enough. <sighs> challenges lay ahead and I know we have a lot of work to do, but we're gonna do it together and we're gonna solve those challenges. The solutions are here in this room and we need to work together to push those solutions forward. It's going to be a team effort. Our board, rural elected officials, our administration, and the team at RMA and our group of companies. We are going to hold the province and the federal government accountable. I'm going to close out with finally thanking each and every one of you here for showing up. More importantly, showing up each day to serve your communities and to lead with, lead with positive changes. I know we have a lot of work to do ahead of us. We're here to help and I'm excited to get to work. Thank you. On the final day of the convention, Westerlin spoke to us about her win and what the path for it will be as the RMA now enters the Westerland era. Um, President Westerlin, thank you so much for doing this. First off, um, the members have voted and you are the new face of rural municipalities across the province of Alberta. How are you feeling this morning? I am excited and terrified at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Why so? I, I'm excited to take on the role. I've been a part of the organization for seven years, so I'm excited to continue some of the work that we've been working on over those those years. Excited for the challenges that lie ahead. Obviously, you've heard um, over the last couple of days, there's some significant challenges we're facing, police model funding, obviously being one of them. There was an announcement um, that that's been frozen for a year. We appreciate that. Um, but there's still some work to be done with that file. Um, obviously, the asset model reviews up, um, mature uh, strategy too as well is, is coming into play as well as as um, I know I mentioned it during my speech, um, rural health care in Alberta, it needs some attention as well. Um, having temporary ER closures in our communities is, is completely unacceptable, um, it, it, not only in Alberta, but anywhere in this country. Um, and uh, we just got a lot of work to do, so I'm incredibly excited. So I think the fearfulness and a little bit of being terrified at the same time is, you know, I've got some very big shoes to fill. Um, I've had the unique opportunity to work with two fantastic um, mentors and, and friends along the way, being uh, Al Kemry from Mountain View County, as well as Paul McLaughlin from, from Pinoca County. Um, and they have left um, tremendous shoes to be filled. So I want to make sure that I fill them and that I fill them for, for rural Alberta and that I do a good job and I don't want to let anyone down. I want to go back to some of the issues, if you don't mind, because I sat through both the Bear Pit sessions and your members are struggling, it sounds like. Affordability is a top of mind. Healthcare is a top of mind. Uh, the agriculture industry industry is top of mind for a lot of the members. Are you prepared to go toe to toe with the premier and these ministers to get these issues addressed in your time as uh, president? Absolutely. Um, I'm willing to sit down at the table with them. You know, at the end of the day, we represent all Albertans. 
um, and, um, and I take that to heart. So I'm willing to sit at the table um, and have those difficult conversations. And you know what, most importantly, um, when we sit down and have those conversations, provide the solutions that the province needs um, and, and that are able to work with so that we can make sure everyone is prospering in, in our communities. Um, because if rural Alberta is doing well, um, all of Alberta is doing well. And you know what, the rest of the country is doing well as well. Uh, I, I, I spoke uh, to Tyler Gandon, President of Alberta Municipalities, moments after your election, and he wants to have a sit-down conversation with you. Are you open to that conversation to bridge the gap between rural and urban when you're talking to the province on issues that you are in simpatico with? <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, I do know Tyler. I have a past relationship. So um, being being VP and moving into this role has has uh, that door is already open. And Tyler's already approached me. And I'm very open to sit down and have those difficult conversations that need to need to be had. You know, for the most part, our, our friends at AB Munis, we get along on, on most on, on most issues. But obviously, there's going to be issues here and there that we don't see eye to eye on. And we need to be respectful in, in how we handle those those processes. And and uh, rural Albertans will st stand strong in our stance um, when when those issues do come forward. You have a relatively similar board from Paul McLaughlin. You have a new face, and then you have a new vice president mm -hmm. uh, in, in John Burroughs, former director of District 3, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm seeing some nodding of heads, so I'm Correct. right there. Um, what's your first priority with the new board? I, it's going to be to sit down and, and have a chat. Um, I'm one person, and I very much believe in, in, in working with the team. Um, I know we have titles, but I do truly believe it's a lateral board. We all have something to offer at the table, so I think it's going to be key to sit, have that sit down as a board and individually. And I want to hear what they want to see, where they want to go, and make sure that we can fit those pieces in together and that we walk side by side as, as we take on the challenges and as we move forward with the issues and uh, the solutions for, for rural Alberta. So I'm excited excited for that. You are the very first female to hold this position. Paul McLaughlin announced that during uh, his speech after your election and this morning as well. This is a big mom moment for RMA. How are you feeling about being the sort of the uh, glass breaker in some sense? <laughs> It's quite humbling, but at the same time, I don't want anyone to think that just because I'm a female that that's why I'm here. You know, I've worked incredibly hard over the years. I've been on council for 14 years, so that's four terms and four elections I've been through. So um, I've been working on countless boards, whether it's in my community, sitting at the provincial level, um, so that ex the experience is there. So um, definitely very humbling, but I don't think it's the only reason that I'm here, why I'm here and where, where I'm at. So. so you are a mother as well. How do, how do your kids feel about having President Mom now at the <laughs> dinner table at night? They're quite excited. They, they're they used to, two of my three children don't know Mom in any different role. Um, so they're used to the busyness and the, the constant chaos. So they're excited. They've actually asked where we're going to next and, and what's what's next up in Mom's agenda. So they're quite excited. They've been, you know, they're probably the biggest cheerleaders I have is, is my three kids. So. And my final question for you is, What's your message to rural municipal leaders today as we enter the Westerland era of RMA? We have a lot of work to do. We have a year left before the next municipal election. Um, obviously, through um, the conference the last few days and the, the last three years, we know we have significant challenges that lie in the next um, less than 12 months. Um, so I want to make sure that they know that I'm here for them. I need to hear from them and we need to get those solutions and we need, get, need to get to work and uh, make sure that we have uh, the, the solutions in place before that next minis municipal election. With Westerland's win, a new VP would need to be elected to fill out the president's vice president's term, which ends in 2025. Three candidates put their name forward and on the second round of ballots, the choice came down to John Burroughs of Woodland County and Robin Kirpywhite of Cypress County. All right, members, we do have a winning candidate after our second round of voting, and I'm pleased to declare John Burroughs as Vice President of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. Now what? Congratulations, John, and would you like to say a few words? District 3 Director John Burroughs came out victorious on the second ballot and thanked the supporters in attendance. Everybody getting here at 8 a.m. Uh, to be part of this, I'm looking out at, at, I mean, the tables are all full and I can tell that everybody takes this seriously and I'm going to as well uh, continue to take it seriously. I really thank you for the opportunity to represent you and uh, and I have to say that uh, congratulations to all the candidates too. We had no bad candidates and it shows the, uh, the dedication that we all have to making communities better. So thank you again. 
Burroughs also spoke to us on the final day about his win and what he has in store as he plans to work alongside the new president to strengthen rural municipalities across the province of Alberta. John, first off, congratulations on uh, your election as the next vice president of RMA. How do you feel? Um, a little numb. It's it's uh, quite a process. It's a very long week, and uh, you know you're talking to people constantly. But uh, I I really look forward to the to the uh, ability to represent rural Albertans in this role. So I'm I'm deeply honored. You have been here for the last three days, speaking to the members of uh, RMA and. Uh, stakeholders for rural municipalities. What did you hear particularly that you want to focus on in this upcoming year? Because you're only taking over for half of a, a term for outgoing Vice President, now President Carr Westerland. The, the overwhelming thing that I hear, and I guess I try and boil them down to you know what fits in, in uh, certain columns, and what I see is an overwhelming challenge for rural municipalities to generate revenue. They're being cut off from that revenue in, in the uh, cancellation of the equipment and well drilling tax. There being uh, the three-year tax holiday. And all of those were laid on by the province, but they're paid for by rural Alberta. And then they are seeing increasing budgetary pressures because the amount of, and you saw the rural infrastructure deficit report that just came out, I think it was 17 uh, billion dollars across rural Alberta and uh, the costs of the police funding model the costs of all of these things going up uh, it's it's going to be a real challenge for all the municipalities so as uh, the incoming vice president what's priority number one for yourself for my <laughs> well I'm a, I'm a vice president so we'll we'll sit down and we'll actually have a conversation as a as an organization and figure out what that priority is I think that's more up to the president to set I'm here as uh, a supportive role rather than um, leadership. So I'm, I'm going to be looking to Kara, our new president, to tell us what, uh, which direction we're looking at. When, when I spoke to now President Westerland uh, for the interviews for, with all the candidates who were running for president, I asked her if she had big shoes to fill, and her shoes were high heels. Yeah. Now you are filling those high heels. So <laughs> what do you see as your role as vice president heading into a kind of challenging year for municipalities as we head into a municipal election? Well, I, I, like I said, I think this is a, a supportive role and something that you need to be able to represent uh, the members in a capacity when the president's not available and make sure that you're carrying that message as a cohesive board and a cohesive message so that uh, they're hearing it loud and clear. In attendance at the RMA convention in Edmonton was Kathy Valentino, interim president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities and second vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. We spoke to Kathy about what she heard from delegates and what the AMM will take away from this RMA convention as they themselves head into their own convention later on this month. Kathy, interim president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, you are here in Edmonton for the Rural Municipalities of Alberta Convention. How does it feel to be with one of your sister or brother PTAs? Brother, sister, we're all the same. We have great relationships. It's been great. Great convention they've put on here. Kudos to them. Now, your convention is coming up literally in about three weeks. Are you hearing concerns from the RMA members that you are going to be expecting to hear at the AMM convention later on this month? Absolutely, and I think that's what makes Western Canada kind of unique. We have a lot of similar issues, even though we have one-offs in each province. But obviously, I've heard lots this week about infrastructure and funding for municipalities. So it's a similar theme that we're hearing across Western Canada. One of the big key takeaways from this week's convention is Cara Westerlin has been elected as the first female, but also the current new president of the uh, so, uh, rural <laughs> municipalities of Alberta. Uh, you'll be working closely with her until your election, depending on how that goes. Uh, did you have a chance to speak with Cara today? Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, able to congratulate her right after. Super proud of her. Congratulations to her. It's a huge accomplishment, and I think they did say it was like 115 years that they've never ever ever had a, a female be their president, so that's something exciting. And I did, I had a chance to meet with her this morning just to ensure that, you know, we have this relationship and continues on with Alberta municipality or Alberta municipalities and Manitoba, and definitely we look forward to a continued relationship with her. It's going to be really good. 
also in your other role as FCM third vice, well, second vice president now, technically, because you all moved up one slot. Uh, from FCM's standpoint, how is it to be here discussing federal issues with municipal leaders? Absolutely. It's been really good. And with the federal election on the horizon, there's lots of chatter. So it's good that we're here in the role of FCM also to hear concerns federally, not just at the Alberta municipality level also. So definitely those issues I bring back to the table also for FCM. So what's next now? Because you have a busy few weeks ahead of yourself getting ready for your own convention. But what do you do now with the information that you gathered from the RMA convention? So I'll brief our association of Manitoba municipalities, our staff, our executive director. We have a, we do have one board meeting briefly before our convention. And then obviously after the convention is when we will do a little bit of strategic planning and get together and I'll bring concerns from Alberta that I've heard also and they will be attending our convention. So they're going to be there also because they're our friends also from Alberta. So we all go to each other's conventions to ensure we're networking and continue the good relationship that we all have. Final question for you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be at, Albert, at the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Convention at the end of the month. There's a lot of policies that are going to be debated. I read through them this past weekend because that's what the type of nerd I am. Looking at those, do you get a sense that the members want answers from this provincial government? I do believe that. I, I think that we've had a year of a new provincial government where we've had the opportunity to sit at the table and build relationships and start communicating. And now I believe our membership with the amount of resolutions coming forward that it's an action plan now from our provincial government to our Manitoba municipalities. And that's what will be a direction moving forward that we need to be at the table and now look for some action. Kathy, always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, always a pleasure. I had a great week with everybody here. Also attending the three, also attending the RMA convention was Tyler Gandum, president of the Alberta municipalities. We spoke with Tyler about his plans to work with incoming President Westerland on areas where both rural and urban municipalities agree. Uh, Tyler, you are, you've been here for the last three days as President of Alberta Municipalities. From your perspective, what did you take away from the last three days for an urban perspective, listening to the rural issues that they're facing with? Yeah, I think it goes back to the, the issues that we face in an urban setting, whether you're Edmonton or Calgary or, or right down into our summer villages. Uh, counties and specialized municipalities, we've all got similar issues. We're all dealing with infrastructure deficits. Uh, they did a presentation the other morning where um, RMA is looking at $17.25 billion of infrastructure deficit. And it, it just bodes well that uh, we can have the same message and, and looking for that support from the province. Otherwise, we're just going to get further in debt with that deficit. Now, one of the big key takeaways that just happened yesterday, actually, was the election of Kara Westerland as the new president of RMA. Your organization, her organization, will be working very closely over the next year. What do you hope to foster out of that relationship between the two of you? I think it's good. One of the um, important things for us is that Kara and I have worked together on a couple of different com uh, committees and boards. Uh, so that transition, I think, is going to be really easy for us. Um, I've already committed to meeting with her either end of November, first part of December. I'm going to head out her way and we're going to meet for lunch and, and establish a good relationship right from the start and then continue to share the messaging. There are a few things that obviously we don't align with, but uh, in for the most part, we're, we're working together and I think we're stronger together too when we can share the same message to the province. One of the things that I heard during the three day and even during the pear pit session was the concern that smaller urban municipalities are being sort of taken advantage of or the rural municipalities are being taken advantage of by the rural uh, urban municipalities in there if they have to dissolve, move in. From your perspective as Alberta Pe uh, municipalities president, do you hear the opposite when you're talking to your urban counterparts that sometimes they they might be feeling a little bit taken advantage of because they're not getting their fair share of funding for their intergovernmental ICF? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard anybody feeling like they've been taken advantage of. It goes back to building those relationships and having the tools provided to each of the municipalities, whether it's the county or the, the smaller urban. I think what's important here is that they each have the ability to um, get the funding provided and working together, it, it, there's going to be some things that you can regionalize on and, and not, it doesn't need to be a full-on amalgamation, but I think that there's better ways that they can work together and create a, a better relationship where that smaller urban 
um, can continue to be viable and, and it's probably in the county's best interest that that municipality is so that it doesn't dissolve and become a part of the county. Everybody wants to maintain their autonomy, everybody wants to, to maintain their name and they're proud of where they come from and that's why they're running for, that's why they're running or have run for councils in their communities is because they want to be the best representation that they can be and I think it's more important that they're working together uh, and that both the, uh, the province and even Alberta municipalities as a whole offers the tools to those smaller communities that uh, maybe need a little bit of help. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's coverage of the RMA convention and the president and vice president election. Now, we will be not fully on next week as we are going to be taking a break as we head into our final few months of 2024. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we have lots in store as we head into our final months of show before our winter hiatus. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and as always, see you next time here on Minnesota.